Welcome to another Retronaut video. So the subject of today's video, as you can imagine, is the uh, Amiga 1000. And uh, in a previous video, we unboxed this machine and uh, we discovered that it was in a slightly sorry state. Not too bad, you know, as things go, but uh, yeah, it did need some attention. And one of the worst things about the machine was the keyboard, uh, which you can see before me after the UV brighting process. And we're actually going to explore how that was done in this video. So in the Uvenator episode where I uh, unveiled the uh, plastic box and the UV lights and how I put it all together with the reflective film, I explained the, uh, the theory uh, behind um, how it works. And uh, one thing I didn't mention in that video too much was how you are meant to keep items down inside the, uh, the liquid, which is obviously a mixture of peroxide and water. So what I use um, is uh, basically just uh, steel bolts. Uh, I bought these from Amazon. They don't actually have the heads on them, just the bolt itself with the thread. It's important that you get stainless steel bolts or you could get other weights. Uh, but the problem with weights I find is that they generally are made out of lead. Do not use lead. I did get some lead because I thought that's gonna be amazing. Turns out lead reacts massively with peroxide. You get lots of bubbles coming out and it's probably making something noxious. So yeah, maybe not the best idea. Stainless steel lives up to its name in peroxide, um, but I would use bolts like this because uh, if you use your cutlery or something like that, uh, you may find it gets rusted. Um, so yeah, best not do that. Best use bolts like this. And what I'm using is uh, blue tack because I find that doesn't react very much with the peroxide and it keeps its tack, uh, you know, the tack part of blue tack. You can then stick that to the plastic, uh, which will then hold down uh, the plastic inside the peroxide and water uh, when it's actually uh, being brightened. The reason why that's important is part of the process liberates a lot of bubbles, and those bubbles can actually accumulate inside the plastic and cause it to float to the surface. That did actually happen with this uh, case during the process. So um, this case was quite tricky because the front part here is very thin and there's actually not many places you can put these uh, to hold it down. Um, so I did struggle with that a little bit. Um, I found that the front part of the case became, became quite buoyant and these fell off uh, numerous times uh, during the brightening process. And it took altogether, I think it was about four days, something like that. So yeah, there was quite a lot of um, toing and froing trying to get this uh, stuff to actually hold in place. At the back, it actually held fine and, and mostly it worked. Um, on the underside of the case, um, it was actually sitting on top like this, so it didn't have uh, much of a job to do. But it did obviously uh, need to be there to hold down the bottom of the case as well, because bubbles again can accumulate on it and cause it to float to the surface. So um, one of the first things you have to do as well is actually clean uh, the plastic before you put it into the peroxide. So we're gonna cover that in this video as well. Take the case, uh, the keyboard apart, um, that isn't really that much work because uh, it turned out that this keyboard is actually very easy to take apart. I think it's just four screws and it literally just falls apart then, um, which is an, you know in stark contrast to some other plastics uh, that I've worked on before. For instance, I remember I once worked on an Apple, uh, an iMac keyboard, and that was a nightmare. So difficult to take apart. This is very simple. Once it came apart, uh, I think I ended up with four pieces, the top of the case, the uh, the top of the case, the bottom of the case, and the two legs that it stands on. So those were the parts that needed to go into the peroxide. So I think that's enough of an intro. I think you can see what it looks like. It, you know, it's done an amazing job. This was just actually sun brighted, but uh, in this video, we're gonna focus on the keyboard. So let's go to the next section where we take the keyboard apart and get it ready to be retrobited in the uh, Uvenator. So, we're going to take the keyboard apart and we're gonna retrobrite it. I'm also gonna clean this cable as well. Um, it's just dirty. Um, just needs some uh, soapy water on this, I think. Uh, you know, washing up liquid, warm water, and a little bit of elbow grease to get this uh, looking much cleaner. Uh, we've been very lucky with the keyboard because it's relatively evenly yellowed. 
mostly on the top, um, and then it kind of gradiates down the side. And that's going to help because um, in the Uvenator, uh, you know, my retrobrighting box, um, most of the light actually comes from the top, but I do make a big effort to make it come from the side as well. So hopefully um, the light is going to hit this as it actually did uh, in the way that it did to actually make it yellowed. The keyboard itself does not need to be retrobrighted. Um, it looks like it's the original color. It's always a little bit dangerous to take a keyboard apart because the caps can break. So in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm only going to do that with the space bar, which obviously has yellowed. Um, and the goal in the retrobrighting, which is going to be tricky, is to try and get that, key, that space bar back to the same color as the rest of the keys. So that's obviously a benchmark. I will be retrobrighting this independently of the keyboard. Um, that doesn't mean I'll have them done at separate times. They'll both be in the peroxide together. But obviously I will be judging the, the actual space bars color on the keys. And I, then I will be judging the, uh, the case itself separately. The first stage of this process is we just need to take it apart. So let's just do that now. Um, all the rubber feet actually are intact on the bottom, which is really nice. There's even a little bit of yellowing on the feet actually. So it looks like it did spend uh, most of its life standing on its feet. Um, not sure if that's something we can fix, but you know, at the end of the day, you don't really see the feet when it's in use to you. So let's take the screws out. I'm gonna put these over here to keep them separate from the power supply screws. I'm hoping to put this uh, back together in the next couple of days once it's actually retrobrighted. I'm estimating by the amount of yellowing, it's gonna take um, possibly one to two, maybe even three days to actually uh, get it back to normal, um, but we have to see. I do quite often leave um, retro brighting on overnight to give you a good eight hour uh, session, but you've got to be very careful with that. It's better to do it in the beginning um, and not towards the end of the process because you don't want to over brighten the, uh, the object, right? So let's just take this apart. I'm hoping it's just going to wriggle apart. Yeah, there we go. Um, there are metal clips here for the feet. There's a port there for the keyboard. Um, not seeing any other screws, so it looks like this may just lift out. Let's try. Yes, it does. Okay, well, that's good. That came out as one piece. Peroxide does actually um, rust metal. So you should try and remove metal from uh, items that you're gonna retrobrite. Um, also, this will need to be cleaned, so we'll show that in a second. Um, you know, very simple, just, I'm just going to wash it. I'm going to try and take out these clips. Oh, that's good. They come out very easily. That's great. And uh, do the feet come out? Yes, they do. Okay, that's good. So there's the possibility that we could actually uh, retrobite the feet now. Although the problem is they will tend to float around, so I'm going to have to do something to try and keep these feet in this kind of orientation so that the yellowest part here gets most of the retro brighting. Uh, I may even masking tape it as well because it's actually, it's actually the right color here. Inside the case, uh, one has to assume that uh, this color here is the actual natural color of the plastic, although that isn't always the case. Um, yellowing can happen even without sunlight. So um, if you look at the underside of the case, and you look at the inside, the inside of the case actually looks more yellow than the underside of the case, which is interesting. So I'm going to look at photographs as a reference for the color. I'm not going to take the feet off. Uh, the peroxide may actually damage the glue. And if it does, then we'll obviously take the feet to clean them and put them back on, glue them back on. I think the rest of it looks good. I think all we need, need to do now is uh, go to the sink area and just give this a wash because there is uh, obviously some dirt on it like this here, uh, which we would like to re remove before we actually do the retro brighting. So yeah, let's do that now. Oh, and uh, I'm going to use this uh, product. Um, it's not an advert. You probably, if you're in a different country, you may find you may, may not be able to get this. I got this from Amazon in the UK. It's, as it says, food grade hydrogen peroxide at 12%. For some reason, it's not 12%, it's 11.99, but whatever. I use this in a flexible dilution. I don't really use a fixed ratio. I use at least a litre of it. This is a five litre bottle. To get this to retrobrite faster, I would use more peroxide, more liquid. But we're lucky today because this, this item is pretty flat. So hopefully 
I'll be able to get um, the items like this in the actual uh, box. Um, and I'll probably retro bright it like this for a very short period of time and then flip this around so only the sides receive uh, the UV light, um, keep, keeping the bottom basically the same color as, as it is right now. But I'll give, I'll give even the bottom a little bit of a UV brightening. And because it is so shallow, hopefully I won't have to use a lot of water. The less water they, that I use, the less diluted this uh, can be and it will have a faster effect on this. That's the problem I find. If you're going to dilute a large, you need a large amount of water, you're gonna basically have to use a large amount of peroxide to keep the uh, solution at a reasonable concentration. If it was a very large object, that's when you might want to actually start using air brighting. So there's one other thing we just need to do quickly before we go to the sink, and that is actually remove the, uh, the space bar. So hopefully I can just uh, lift it like this. There we go. And it's got the usual bar underneath it. It's quite rusty underneath, actually. Uh, let's have a look here. Okay, there's a metal thing coming off. So I'm not, I'm not going to try and um, clean this up too much. There's a bit of corrosion and dirt here. I'm just going to wipe this. So we need to keep these springs here with the keyboard. Obviously, you don't want those in the peroxide. And, um, and when I wash this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and weight this so that it faces like this, faces upwards. Again, it's pretty shallow, so hopefully that'll keep the concentration of peroxide down. Okay, so let's move over to the sink and uh, get these washed. Okay, so I moved over to the sink area. I put in my uh, plug. Just going to turn on the hot water. Move that a bit, I'm just getting splashed. And we're just going to use liberal amounts of uh, washing up liquid. That's all it needs to be really, nothing more high tech than that right now. Because all I'm trying to do is just get grease and dirt off these uh, plastic items. Because when they go in the peroxide, you don't want to have any heavy dirt on the actual plastic. Because what you want is for the, um, the peroxide to, you know, attack the plastic um, in a very even way. So, yeah. This is a, an important step. It just gets rid of basic dirt, which there always is. Um, you may not realize it. It may just look like it's yellowing. Sometimes you, um, you give it a quick scrub with a, a, you know, a mild scarring pad like this, and you find that uh, it all, already looks uh, lighter. You know, you've taken off just a sort of uh, level of grime. So yeah, that, that should be enough for that. I think we've got enough water. So yeah, just a mild, wash. Uh, I'm going to try and be careful with the, uh, the logo. Uh, obviously that will probably come off in the peroxide and what I use is I just use sellotape, um, you know, clear uh, packing tape to um, protect it. Although I suppose uh, black tape would do just as well. Um, the main thing I think is that the um, the peroxide can't get to the plastic um, as the UV light itself isn't going to um, bleach it too much. Never had issues with um, logos becoming too bleached just by the UV light itself. It has to have the peroxide in contact for the bleaching process to take place. Um, okay, so we're just going to get all the interior edges of this washed. It's very yellow. I don't know if that's coming across on the camera, but yeah, it's very, very yellow. Um, but I find that with these, um, you know, very yellowed items, you get the best results because, you know, the difference between before and after is amazing. Um, and uh, it's also a little bit easier to judge, you know. And uh, I also find that the, um, the main part of the yellowing, actually uh, the de-yellowing process, I should say, takes place very quickly. Um, within the first day. And then what you might find is to get, you know, to get rid of 80% of the yellowing happens in a day. And then the last 20% might then take two days, which is a bit crazy. So yeah, the less yellowing you have, the less of uh, an effect the peroxide seems to have. So uh, yeah, it does seem to tail off a bit. So luckily on this particular item, there's no um, paper uh, labels, just a plastic label here, which is great. Um, so, just going to get this uh, nice and washed. That looks pretty good now. 
Now I remember that on the front of the keyboard there was a little bit of dirt on the uh, right hand side, like a pe pencil mark or something. So let's, let's have a look at that, see if we got that off. No, we haven't, see, we haven't removed that. So let's try and give that a bit of a scrub. That is a real squeaking noise, not a sound effect. Yeah, I think we got it. Yeah. Still slightly visible. I actually think it's a piece of pencil. I think that's what it is. It's coming off anyway. That looks good. Okay, next, fresh water. And um, I haven't actually washed the feet, but I don't think they're very dirty. So I'll just give the feet a bit of a scrub if I can find them. There we are. And now fresh water. Oops. Let's just reduce the pressure a bit. It's just spraying everywhere. It's important to get the soapy water off. Same reason as it is to get the dirt off. We don't want uh, any sort of wash up liquid in the uh, peroxide. Ah, there's actually a bit of yellow stuff here, which is rust. I think let's give that a quick go. Yeah, that's come off. Make sure we haven't got any inside here. Doesn't seem to be. Yeah, this machine in general just seems to have quite a lot of rust on it. So at some point it's spent a, at least a part of its life in a wet environment, uh, which is a pity, but there we are. Uh, you know, this was effectively junk for a long time. So it's amazing it's actually survived at all really, I suppose. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in a rack out of, over here, out of camera, just to get the water off it. And uh, the next stage, is to put some weights on them. Uh, this was something I didn't really cover in my Uvinator video, but it's important that when you put these in the uh, peroxide, they don't float. And uh, when you put things in peroxide with the UV lights, a lot of bubbles are produced and they do tend to float. So it's important to weigh them down. So let me show you how I do that next. So what I have here is another purchase from um, Amazon. It's a bunch of bolts uh, without any heads on. Um, and they're made of stainless steel, which is very important because um, stainless steel doesn't seem to react with peroxide. Otherwise these would rust really quickly. How am I gonna hold them onto the plastic? Well, uh, Mark's, Mark Fixit Stuff's uh, Smurf's Knot is uh, an approved uh, method. And this is what I use. So let me just uh, get these out. It looks like all the blue tacks got together into a bit of a Smurf party. Uh, so let's just pull it apart and uh, it can help sometimes to knead it, you know, because it gets a little bit stiff and what we want to do is have it sticky. So let's just revive it a bit by giving it a bit of stretchiness. Make sure it's on the bolt and then get the plastic and uh, what I'm going to do is just push it onto the plastic like this. And I find that blue tack doesn't react with peroxide um, and it doesn't lose its stickiness in peroxide, which is an important thing. I find that most tapes do lose their adhesion inside peroxide. So I find that sticky tapes, duct tape, things like that, they don't really work. Um, probably need maybe four of these on here because uh, this is a it's a large area of plastic that can trap a lot of bubbles. So it has, it's gonna have a tendency to float. But most of the time that I'm gonna be retro writing this, it's actually gonna be facing like this, which is great because the bubbles can't get trapped. So probably three will do. So that's ready to go in the uh, UV um, tank, the Uvenator. Now for the, uh, the top part. This can be very tricky, I find sometimes, because you just don't have much area to put the uh, blue tag into. So you've got to be careful where you put it. Uh, a piece will fit here, as you can see. Just, I'm just trying to spread the blue tag out to make decent contact. This piece can go here. It'd be nice to have a piece in here, but you can see there's almost no surface area. 
So uh, this piece will go here. Let's try and get up here a bit more. I'm trying to get into contact with the plastic so it makes good adherence. And uh, yeah, I might try and put a piece in there actually. Uh, I might get a smaller piece, just break it off. Knead it a bit, put it around the plastic, uh, sorry, the bolt. Yeah, you see it's not gonna sit flat. So it's gonna actually push this up a bit, um, which is not ideal. So I don't think we've got any other way around that really. We're just gonna have to go with that because we have to weigh it down. Otherwise, when it's in the water, this bit's gonna flap upwards when the, when the bubbles get in there. So that's a pity because that means we need to use more water in this area to make it uh, actually go over the top of the plastic. It's a bit of a pain. Hmm. Okay, more, more blue tack. There we are. Okay, that's not too bad. So that's gonna sit okay. Now for the uh, space bar. It shouldn't be too difficult. There we are. Space bar's ready to go. And, uh, hmm, these guys. I'm gonna have to take some of this, I think. And uh, try and put it on them. We do have two bolts. So I need a piece for that one and a piece for this one. I'm not sure that's gonna be enough. Uh, let's try. Make sure this goes over the top so it holds on. Yeah, I think that's okay. These are gonna be tricky. So what's the yellowed part? It's this part. So what, oh, actually, oh, it doesn't quite fit. I wonder if I can screw it in there slightly. I can, aha. That's an interesting fix for the problem. Just need to uh, screw it in here ever so slightly. Just enough so it holds it. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I can put those like that. Okay, so the next stage now is we're gonna put these in the uvinator and then I'm going to pour in the peroxide and I will then uh, show you these in situ um, as we turn on the lights. So let's do that next. Okay, so I'm in my home office um, and uh, what we're actually gonna do here is uh, put the peroxide in. I've got the peroxide there just below you in the camera. I've opened my patio doors and that's to allow me to put a hose pipe in here. I would normally actually do this with just jugs of water, but to make this process a little bit faster today, I'm gonna to use a hose pipe on low pressure. Obviously we don't want water splashing everywhere. So the first thing to do is we're gonna put in uh, one liter of peroxide and I, that isn't really that much, um, but to try and save on it, um, actually I'll do two, two liters. I think two liters would be the minimum we can use here. So I'm just gonna open up the peroxide and pour it into the one liter jug inside the, inside the case to stop splashing. Obviously it's very caustic. I'm actually quite far up away from it and I'm wearing glasses to protect my eyes. It is actually splashing quite a lot of it. So let's lower this. There we are, that's one liter. We'll just pour that in. And as you can see, it hardly covers anything. It doesn't cover anything really. So we do need to put water in there to make up the, uh, the volume. Next, another liter. There we are. Some splashed on my skin there, so that's gonna be a bit irritating. And there's some on the floor, so I do need to wipe it off when I'm finished. So make sure that's nice and closed and out of the way. So next, water. So let me go and get the hose pipe. Okay, and now I'm gonna fill it up. We just tap water. Let's pour this out. So we just want everything submerged. Not a lot. We can always top it up later. And I think that's enough. Okay. I think a lot of bubbles got underneath here. So let's just splash it about a bit. Put it back in. 
shake it, try and get any air bubbles out. Okay. This is okay. Let's get this under water. Centralize it. There we are. Okay, let's go back on the other side of the camera. And now I'm going to put the uh, the top on to keep the uh, fumes and uh, light in. Get this into position. That feels good. And now the lights. Goes light number one. Light number two. And now turn them both on. Make sure they're on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They're in position. And now it's just a matter of time. Just need to keep on coming back to this and checking it and making sure that uh, the bleaching the process doesn't go too far. So uh, let's skip forward a few days and we'll see how that comes out. So it's been, I think about four, five days, four days, I think and the retrobriting process is uh, completed for the keyboard. How did it come out? Well, uh, let me show it to you. Um, I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, I would say possibly I went a little bit too far with the retrobriting. And the reason for that is, um, and this is a pitfall that you may want to watch out for yourself. When I had it in the, in the Uvenator, in the box, um, I had the underside of the case open and facing upwards, and I had this the top side facing upwards, so it got most of the UV light. This was sitting here, the bottom of the case was sitting here. So I was comparing the yellowing on the case, which got a lot of yellowing, to the interior of the case. And I was using that as my benchmark. Now, one of the things I found with UV light is it can be deceiving. When you look at the yellowing, it can appear to be more severe than it is in reality. It's like the UV light accentuates that yellowing. I think you've seen it, you might have seen it in, in a nightclub if, you, if you're old enough to go to a nightclub. Um, somebody might smile and may, they may not have perfectly white teeth and they appear to have yellow teeth. Um, so it does seem to, UV light does seem to ex accentuate yellowing. So that's something um, I'm definitely gonna look out for in the future. I took it out today. I washed the, uh, the keyboard in soapy water. It's important that when you obviously get it out, you get rid of the uh, peroxide. You don't want it to carry on bleaching. And uh, it actually looked quite patchy. I was really disappointed. I thought, well, that's lo not looking great. Um, I could see quite a dark patch here. Um, and um, I, yeah, I was disappointed. I thought, okay, that's not gone well. But then after a while, and this is the weird thing, it dried and it was just the water, I think. Uh, it was just a damp patch creating that darkness. And uh, when I actually dried it off and put it all together, and uh, I put some UV protector on it on as well, the product that you uh, may have seen on, um, I think it's been used on Adrian's Digital Basement and also on the Retro Man Cave. So that's definitely something to look out for. I think it's called 503 Aerospace Protectant, and it's basically a plastic protectant and it's meant to protect against UV, but it also gives your plastic a nice sheen. Um, so it can make it look uh, much newer once you've obviously cleaned it. Once I did all of that, I honestly think it looked amazing. Um, that's the underside of the case. Uh, the legs got retro brighted as well. Um, and they're working fine. You know, it's just looking really good. Are there any uh, other uh, issues with it? Yes, there are. So the badge, if I hold that up to the camera, it's actually got retro brighted a bit. And I mentioned this at the beginning of the video that um, there was some plastic protect protection film on and I thought that that would protect it from the UV brightening process. And it doesn't really seem to have done that, which is a bit unusual because I've done other um, cases and it, it actually has done the job. So when I went to peel off the protectorant, it turned out that in fact, it's actually, the, the, the color is actually on the sticker itself. So it looks like, uh, uh, Commodore cheaped out a bit in the way that they did this. Um, it looks like it's almost like a color transfer and it got stuck on top of the, uh, the raised plastic and that's where you get the color from. And because it's not actually paint um, stuck onto the plastic, it obviously was a mu much more susceptible to the, um, the, the bleaching process, which is why it hasn't fared so well. So yeah, I don't know if you can see that. If I compare it to the actual uh, logo on the case, you can see that it's, uh, it's, it's actually bleached it quite a lot. How can I fix that? 
I used to paint uh, toy figures, you know, toy soldiers back in the day, you know, Warhammer and things like that, D&D figures. And I got, I was pretty good at it. I won, uh, I won competitions. But um, what I could do is I could get those colors and uh, with a very fine brush and uh, some magnification, paint it back on. And if I was careful about how I did that, I'm sure I could get it to look as good as the original one. So there's a fix there. Um, the case itself was uh, sun brighted and I did that, I think, for about three days. And uh, I didn't really notice much of a difference, but it hasn't harmed. Uh, the case, I think, looks fantastic. Uh, it didn't use the uh, Uvinator, but I think that process was fine. I, don't, I didn't really think it needed retro brightening in the first place. So the sun uh, brightening was ba basically a bit of a bonus. So yeah, that is the Uvinator in action. And I think if you go back to the video at the beginning, I'll try and show you a comparison of this side by side with the, uh, the keyboard before it got retrobrighted, and it's actually quite shocking, the difference. Um, it's testament to how good the Uvenator is uh, in terms of brightening and how, how much of an effect it can have. You just have to be patient and also sometimes, as I said, maybe pull out the item a little bit earlier than you think you need to and check it because it might have gone a little bit too far. Um, but yeah, you know, the Amiga 1000, I think, looks amazing. Um, I'm really, really happy with the end result. And um, there's another video where we look at the whole process of the whole uh, regeneration of the machine. Um, and there's another machine which I've actually used in the Uvenator, which is an Amiga 4000. And that actually came out looking really good. Um, and that had really uneven yellowing. So that was quite technical, actually, to get that looking just right. I had to use masking tape on different sides of the, it was actually the fascia because the body of the Amiga 4000 is actually, I think it's metal. Um, so it's only just the fascia that you need to uh, retrobrite. And in my case, it was pretty yellow. So uh, the Uvenator wins again, and um, I hope that it will help you to, you know, retrobrite your own uh, items. Obviously, if you have any ideas about how to do it better, and if you have your own Uvenator, which is even better, then, you know, please share that with me and, you know, mention it in the comments. Um, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please click on the like button. And obviously, if you liked it, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And uh, if you if you liked the video, please mention it to your friends. Word of mouth uh, can help just as much as YouTube's algorithms in getting this video to people who enjoy it. Um, so yeah, if you have any friends, please mention it to them, and uh, hopefully they'll enjoy this video as well. Um, that's it for now. Um, I'll catch you in the next video.